plaintiff, Karen Braxton, has a fetish for lips, and she asked the defendant if she could kiss him because he has nice lips. Karen claims she started a sexual relationship with the defendant, despite the fact that she's 53 and he is 36, but she's suing him today for unpaid loans. Defendant Richard Clemens admits that he had a sexual relationship with Karen and says she is a good Christian woman, even though she had him falsely arrested. Richard also admits that Karen helped him out when he was in a financial bind, but insists he agreed to repay her with sex. Start with you. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to be honest, I have a fetish for lips. And Mr. Clemens has very nice lips that I just enjoyed. So, um, what I, he looks nice, so, but anyway. You mean um, like kissing? Yes. Okay. So I'm attracted to that. So uh, anyway, um, Mr. Clements came to reside at where I was working at the apartment building there. And uh, within a week, I just kind of lowered my professionalism and asked him if I could kiss him. Did you knock anything off the rent? <laughs> the landlord so I didn't have to do oh, that. Oh, okay. You just worked there. I just worked there. Okay. Yes. Anyway, uh, I, he asked me, are you serious? I said, yes, I am. I wanted to kiss him. So he kissed me and I felt like I was 16 again, but I'm, on, I'm 53. He's 36. So I was like, whoa, 17 years different. I like, you know, but anyway, that was just kind of like the start of it. So we kind of like to, you know, got a little, um, developed a little relationship, but then I started to notice things changing. Uh, there was one point that Mr. Clemens and I got into like a dispute, really ugly argument, but anyhow, it kind of led to a passionate type thing. So we end up having, you know, and then- Making I love. Yeah. Okay. okay. He was your lover. No, no, it just, not my lover, just we just had sex. A lover to me is the person I'm in a relationship with. Okay. That was just sex. All right, uh, you're just a sex fiend. Yeah. Right. I'm not a sex fiend. No, 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 no. It was just sex. Okay. It happened. And, uh, but after over, after it was over, we got into an argument again. Mm -hmm. After just doing that, how he crazy. He liked the sex? Yeah, he so did. Most men don't argue with you if they like it. Well, if he's, if, if you he control my like Mr. Clinton. I was just having sex. It wasn't that, 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 that. And then y'all have it and he argue. That's not usually how it goes. No, no, no. That, you usually not, have sex and you have. Okay, I'll explain why uh, we argue, Mr. <laughs> you say he has sex with you and say, get out of here. Why are you doing that? I can tell you why we was arguing, Judge Mathis. Okay, mm -hmm. after it was over with, um, he had already taken a shower already, and he wanted to take another shower. I was like, <laughs> you might want to stop while you're ahead, man. That's what we was fussing. That's what the we was man fussing. argues with you after sex, and he takes two showers. No, 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 no. Lord no, have mercy. No, you no. think that y'all were? That's Never not mind. You're right about that. Y'all wasn't lovers. No kind of way. Let me hear from you, sir. Uh, good morning, Judge. You uh, coming here bragging about, yeah, all I want is some sex out of him. I'm 53 and he is 36 and I'm made him. She really fronted you off. I tried to save you. You give me a little credit, right? I tried to look out for you. Go ahead. You tell me about this. Judge, we, we did have a relationship. However, uh, there came a point in time where I wanted to disengage uh, the relationship. Why? Well, I, I don't want her humiliated. Uh, she's a good woman. <gasps> okay. Uh, well, she's a Christian it. woman. She attempted uh, to help me financially. Um, no wonder you don't want to humiliate him. <laughs> I don't blame you. He might want some more ends down the line. No, it's, it's not that, Judge. I mean, uh, the thing is, is that, um, you know, the contract uh, that I signed was signed under duress, emotional oh duress. Uh, you We're know, gonna get to that. What are you suing him for? What loans? Yes, uh, the plaintiff, uh, because we had kind of got kind of close, uh, did approach me that he had a vehicle that needed some repairs. And if I could loan him some money to do the repairs. And I agreed to it because he said that he was going back to Wayne State 
and that he would be getting a refund in May and that he would repay me in April. Okay. So I agreed to, to do that. Of course, that didn't happen. Something happened where he- How much did you loan him? $300 for the repair of the car mm -hmm. and $50 for his phone bill. All right. Then when April came for him to get the payment, somewhere he had defaulted on something, some loan or something. So he assured me that he would get his monies in August. So I'm just, I said, well, let me go buy his house. It's the day after he's supposed to pay me. And I get there and uh, I'm kind of tired. So I'm just kind of stretching and I go to the door and wow, open up. What the sauce are you doing here? And it just went all off. And I was like, well, I was coming to get, you know, my money. I don't have nothing. Matter of fact, I don't owe you nothing. And this and that, it just went crazy, just crazy, crazy. This quiet and <laughs> sensitive quiet. man. Oh, he went real crazy. And that wasn't the first time I had an incident where uh, my uh, vehicle was down. And I didn't have any money to uh, get to the east side from the west side. So I borrowed $10 from a friend to give to him to put in his gas tank. As we're on 94 going towards the house. So I picked my purse up and it was open. The $10 that I had for him flew out the window. Oh, I was trying to, to, to get it and I couldn't catch it. I couldn't catch it. So it went, so I said, it went out the window. You threw my money out the window? Why would I throw money out the window? It flew out the window. He took my wallet and threw it out the window. How humiliating. It was. It really was. He threw it out there on the, you know. And he comes in here talking, I don't want to humiliate it. Dude. You know. And then he didn't humiliate the woman all in public. And then he would tell people, I'll go to jail for her. I'll take a bullet for her. You ain't got to do all that for me. <laughs> so you ain't asked for all that. I didn't ask for all that. Just give your money. That'd I'm be just enough. Just give me my money. That's all I want. He didn't like the sex? Yeah, he so did. Most men don't argue with you if they like it. Well, if he's if if you control my like Mr. Clinton. I was just having sex. It wasn't that, 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 that. And then y'all have it in the argue. That's not usually how it goes. No. <laughs> you say he had sex with you and said, get out of here. Why you get the fire? Defendant Richard Clements had a sexual relationship with the plaintiff, despite the fact that she's 53 and he is 36. Sir, what do you want to tell me about this loan? Um... She did give me money uh, over a period. I, I believe it was like a thousand dollars, Judge, over a period of months. Um, I don't recall the exact date, but what happened is uh, she placed me in jail uh, prior to this uh, for she domestic the police? violence. I didn't place him well, anywhere. I just called. Excuse me. She effectuated the the, the the process so that I could get arrested, uh, and it was under false pretenses. Think she's attorney with she, words. Excuse me. I say he thinks he's an attorney. That's why he tried to use all them words and stuff. <laughs> um, as I was saying, um, what she did is um, uh, I was placed in jail. She came and got me out the next day, um, and then I moved from that apartment and uh, got a house. She came over to my house uh, several months after I had uh, disengaged uh, sexually. Um, Liar. After I had disengaged the relationship uh, sexually, she came over. Uh, I had a female friend that was there. Oh, you came over. Judge, that's a lie. That's a lie, Judge Matthews. Let him finish. He that's gave a his straight out lie. I'll let you give you a sec. Now, why you make that up like that, Richard? Let him finish. <laughs> Damn. Go ahead. She came over and what happened? Um, I had a female friend. I had to make her go in the back room. She came over screaming. Um, I instructed her to get off my property. Screaming about what? Screaming about money. She said that I owed her money. Um, she had given me money. So morally, I felt that, you know, I should replace some of her money. She felt used. Oh, it was a gift. That's your defense. Well, the money, well, yeah, in exchange okay. for sex. Okay, you yes. say. Oh, you crazy. Now, I'm that's sorry. two different things. First, I said, was it a gift? And then you said it was in exchange for sex. That's not that. That's prostitution. You were prostituting yeah. yourself to the woman. That's what you're saying? Okay, yes. All right. That's okay. a lie, Judge okay. Matthews. Man, I'm man, sorry. He admits to being a male prostitute. Let me tell you something, Judge Matthews. <laughs> Let the man, well, maybe it's not you. Maybe he's okay. got you confused with some other women who purchased he him. He does, All because, right. he, because he, used, he would okay, tell me. Okay, ma'am, that's enough. 
that wasn't that statement. He said he, it was a gift, ma'am. No, it wasn't. This is that's why he signed these papers. He gave me what his ID did he sign? Let's and see his ID to hold so I get my money back. And then he gave this little bogus thing, look like a, a trying to be attorney, write some junk <laughs> right there. It made no sense. <laughs> and then and then he called me back and said, if you know the law, you know that don't mean anything. And um, Richard must compensate Karen three hundred and fifty with all due haste. <laughs> <laughs> Upon disbursement of Wayne State University refund process. All right, he got a little legalese in it. Don't try, to, don't try to put the man down. He's trying to lift himself up. Trying. All right, but you do admit, sir, to hoe and hurt. What's your defense? Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, so she came over uh, to my house uh, screaming. Uh, I told her to uh, to get off my property. I did get upset and I did grab her and I placed her off of my porch. Um, what she did at that time was stated, look, you either sign this or you going to jail tonight. Okay. And you signed it under duress. That is correct. That's not even the same letter. You thought you would go to jail even though you didn't do anything. Oh, absolutely. Why? Well, that's, I mean, all she has to do is make a call and the presumption lies with her. That's not true. Well, it's they have to it have worked evidence, out. Well, they worked out like that against me the last time, Judge. So. That was the last time, right? But you can't assume it's going to happen the next time. Well, my you belief, weren't a good lawyer. I thought you were a halfway lawyer, <laughs> Judge. I'm at Wayne State University as a very fine law student. school. Well, he ain't there yet. He's he oh, you're in the law yet. school. He ain't in there yet. I'm Quiet. 18. You're in the third year of law school. No, sir. I'm 18 credits away from my first year of law school. Oh, okay. Well, that's when you need to start quoting the law. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> when you get in, but sir. I'm not accepting that you, you signed this under duress because she told you you would go to jail. If you put your hands on her, she was right. You might go to jail. And so it is not duress. It's truth okay. that she gave you. You admit I put my hands on her. Yes, you did violate uh, her person and committed an assault. You'll learn that when you go to law school. As a result, she had every right to send you to jail. So it's not forcing you. She just said, I will tell the truth if you do not give me my money. And both things were true. You owed her money and you had assaulted her. Mm -hmm. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have Thank a good you. day. Thank you. I don't even want to be bothered with it because he just lied in that courtroom, that prostitute. I didn't even appreciate that. And when I got him arrested the first time, it's because he was still living where I was working and he assaulted me. That's where that came in at. After you moved, when I came to your house in August, Richard, you I came to get my money. You tried to make her say that you I was on your porch and she told you, I'm not going to lie for you. She was on the ground. You put her your hands on her and pushed her into that car. I don't care about no woman in your house. I wanted my money and I was not creating a scene. No, I did not say nothing about you going to jail. I was going to do that. That was a lie. And you know that was a lie. And you told me, I don't lie, Karen. That was a big lie you told in there. The judge believed her and that's what's Because it was the truth. Out. That's why.